witch's laugh. I, I asked Mum if it was okay for me to be a witch for Halloween, and she said, You have always had the power, my dear. You just had to learn it for yourself. So I took that as a yes. But, but, but I decided to go with the more stereo kind witch's costume so I could bust up some myths. First, first, I'm not green because, well, that's just ridiculous. That green witch skin, it was just invented by the Wizard of the Oz in 1939. And it was a pretty stupid idea because, because that skin paint was toxic for Margaret the best witch ever Hamilton. So, so the green skin fad, that didn't last. Anyway, anyway, the history of witches, it's brilliant, but it will take a whole semester. So you should totally do some reading because witches, they've been given a really, a really bad rap. I mean, that shaking spear guy, he didn't help at all with his double, double toil and trouble. Fire burn and cauldron bubble. Ha! The cauldron was just an old pot and you could find it, you could find it in any kitchen. But, but boy, you put, put. Put a witch with it and it's all about the eyes of the newts and the toes of the frog instead of you know just just a tasty oxtail stew so so did you know that for a real proper witch a cauldron it, it represents the goddess and her womb so so you know no, no boiling and bubbling also also the broom ha the story of the witch's broom really starts off with bread I mean, everything fun starts with bread. So, so back in the middle of the ages, bread was made with some rye, and rye was a cozy place for a fungus called ergot to grow. And if you eat some of that funky fungus, well, whoopee! It, it, in the right amount, it can be a hallucination gin, and it, and it caused an affliction called dancing mania. So, so the two leggings they would make witches brew to put on their skin, usually the pits of the arms or the sensitive sensitive private areas where the glands were always thirsty, and, and they would dip the broom handles into these trippy ointments, straddle the brooms, and then dance or jump around in the open fields, giving them a sensation of a, a sensation of flying as the drugs took effect. So you know that caused some tall tales. For for a proper witch. The broom is used in rituals to clean the negative energies from her home or, or keep the energies balanced, but they don't use it to hallucinate with funky fungus. Oh, and, and the witch's pointy hat. That history is also pretty confusing. There were, there were a lot of pointy hats in the histories, like the tapering hennas that the medieval noble women wore or the soft fringing caps of the French revolutionaries. Oh, and the Smurfs. It wasn't until the 1700s that children's books started depicting old crones in pointed hats as a sign of dark magic. And so there's a lot of arguing about these hats and where they come from and what they meant. But but I have my own theory. I think witches are awesome and good. And the hat is where they could be hiding their snacks. <laughs> it could be so true because you never hear tales about hungry witches. Anyway, anyway, I also added a wart to my costume because, because in the 17th century, the wart was seen as the devil's mark. And it was a justification given to accuse women of witchcraft during the Salem witchcraft trials. Because, you know, evidence wasn't important. But it was totally bogus because warts are just an infection that causes rough bumps to form on your skin. I just added three whiskers to mine for fun. <laughs> Okay, so, so now you know some history about the witch symbolizing. You should totally do some, some more homework, though. Maybe you could watch some witch movies. But, but maybe not the one with the Blair Witch or that Rosemary and her freaky baby because you two leggeds, you already have enough stress to worry about right now. So have a spooky week, everyone. And if you're a for real witch, we also want to wish you a good Samhain. Okay, bye, everyone.